into a little bit about my oh, um, sorry. oh no all good um about myself already but um i've worked on a, a couple shows including these um and as you can probably tell from uh my arrangement of shows that i've worked on um which i started like i said i started in um in 2019 through the dreamworks tv trainee program um hopping on to trollstopia where i worked with jim um and then kind of bouncing around ever since then um my my forte has kind of been in uh mainly tv comedy um and specifically with a lot of these shows musical comedy um particularly with trollstopia that was my you know my first ever job in the industry and um if you're familiar with the show, every single episode has a song sequence, every single one of them. Um, and so it was, you know, no matter what, if you were boarding on that show, odds are you're going to be boarding on the song sequence. Um, and it was such a great way to just immediately immerse myself in um, what the style of boarding was for that, for that kind of thing. Um, and really, there you go. Uh, and really kind of, um, my love of storyboarding came from how much I loved to do song sequences. Um, I was one of those kids that, you know, was constantly coming up with like characters and stories and I really loved music and I would like, you know, turn on my little iPod Nano as a kid and just zone out and like think like, okay, this, this specific song, I can totally see my, my OCs having a sword fight to this moment. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna hit on this beat. It's gonna be great. Um, and so I would just like thumb out and board out pages and pages of um, just little moments of my own stories set to songs or even uh, musicals that I really loved um, and kind of didn't really put together the pieces that that was part of like the career of storyboarding or it could be. Um, and I really just kind of had that epiphany um, in college where I was like, oh, wait, I could that's a part of this. I could I could get paid to make these song sequences. That's that's rad. Cool. Awesome. Um, and yeah, when I when I started at DreamWorks TV, I was just an absolute little baby to the uh, to the professional world. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is this is me kind of having that realization. All these movies that I grew up with and loved, they all have song sequences. Um, <laughs> but back to me being a little baby trainee. Um, and really being on a show that had so many, such an emphasis on songs and um, that kind of musical genre, I just learned so much from the very, very kind crew around me that was willing to kind of go into their own, uh, their own experiences and their own techniques. Um, so really a lot of like what I'm going to be talking about today, I kind of learned from, from all of them. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I... Uh, I just absolutely fell in love um, as soon as I got started. So, uh, and I've just kind of kept <laughs> going ever since. And a bunch of people on the Twit and Twitch chat are saying like they're attending because they want to make the uh, OC AMV of their dreams. And yes. And they're uh, helping them with their dreams too. Yes. So, Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is my goal. That's the thing. I mean, I think especially for, I've talked to um, kind of like younger people that are trying to get into the industry um, and who are trying to figure out what to put in their portfolio. And I ask them like, well, what do you like to do? And they're like, well, I have, there are all of these like songs that I like to imagine like these music videos of my OCs to. And I'm like, good, do it, do it. Nothing's stopping mm -hmm. you, put it in your portfolio. <laughs> yeah, there's like, a, there's like oh. a weird embarrassment about it. Right? And you're like, yeah. no, that stuff's awesome. Put it no, in there, I wanna rad. see it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know your your vague lore. I want to see that. <laughs> I want to see your characters. Um, because that's what you're gonna be passionate about. And I feel like that's that passion's gonna show. Um, so yeah, I, I'm delighted. Uh please make make all the AMVs of your characters. Uh so yeah, so um I thought I'd go a little into my personal process. Um, this is going to be kind of skewer, skewed more towards like a professional setting, um, but really like if I'm just working on a song sequence for myself, the process is pretty similar. Um, but yeah, so starts out with the handout. Um, so just the way that it does that you would uh, tackle a like an episode. Um, and also I come from a TV background, so I'm going to be kind of 
coming from that angle as well. Um, but usually you have have a meeting um, where uh, you are given like a, a part of a script to work off of with you yourself and some other board partners. Um, and if a song happens to be in that episode and you are tasked to uh, take that song and turn it into a sequence, that also becomes part of the handout. Um, and one of the most valuable things about uh, a handout in my experience is that it's really an opportunity to get to see like what your director, what your showrunner, um, what the the other kind of higher ups on your crew have in mind for this. And um, in my experience, they'll usually just kind of tell you like, well, you know, we were really we were really looking for something a little a little more slow and dramatic or, oh, we were really wanting to reference uh, this and this. And they just kind of give you like a cheat code for how to approach the song sequence, how to approach the song. Um, and it was, it, it can be incredibly helpful. Um, but yeah, you're never usually... going in there with like a blank page. They're usually like, here's what we're thinking for this, but explore how you want. Oh, um, pardon? Oh, so you're never, you're never just, it's, you're never just hitting a blank page. You're always having the song and getting like a little bit of creative brief. So you kind of know the direction that the, sh that the song wants to go and that the song should go. Correct. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I can't think of a single time when I didn't have a handout where I came away with like a couple pages of notes. Um, and, you know, it was still enough that I felt like I had, I still felt like I had creative freedom. Um, and then I was given the opportunity to kind of go ham and, you know, explore things myself. Um, but there was always that guidance, um, which was incredibly, incredibly helpful. But yeah, and honestly, um, when I first started out, my initial instinct was just as soon as I got that handout, as soon as I knew I was going to be working on this song, to just immediately hit Storyboard Pro and start thumbing it out. Um, but I I learned that it was honestly kind of a better use of my time, um, and it helped me come up with better ideas if I just spent like maybe half a day not even touching my tablet, not even touching my pen just listening to the song on loop. Um, so these are just kind of silly little drawings of me. Um, but honestly, they're kind of autobiographical. Like one of the things that I really like to do when I get a song is um, if I'm like at the studio, I'll just like go on a walk through the campus and listen to it on my headphones. Or um, I, if I'm at home, I'll like take my dog on a walk and just listen to it on loop, on loop. And I won't even try to think like, okay, you know, this is the first lyric. How am I going to start this? How am I going to like go chronologically? Bah, 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 bah. I just let it wash over me. Um, and I get excited about the song. And I feel like that's the biggest thing that really helps me is just enjoying the song first and foremost before mm -hmm. viewing it as like something I have to do, like a piece of work. Um, because if I'm excited about it, then I'm invested and the ideas come a little easier. Um, so yeah, I would, I would encourage you if you, if you know, you're working on a song sequence, um, and, uh, you're, you're feeling like a little, a little rusty, you don't really know where to go with it. Try not to even think about boarding it yet. Like just try to think of it as a song and see what comes to you. Um, so also as a, oh yeah. I was just going to end one tip for that too. I don't know. It, like it is, it is tough to control your handout date as a, as a board artist, but if you can request to get the song or get the script early on a Friday so that like you can take it home and just listen to it on the weekend and not even put pen to paper, but just let it percolate for a little bit. Just let the unconscious mind like work on it and don't do anything on it. Just listen to it a couple of times and let it percolate. Like I always find that's personally helpful for me. Oh my God. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel like after every time I do a song sequence, I just have that song permanently stuck in my head for the rest of my life. Like mm -hmm. there are so many songs and trolls that I worked on that I still can totally that I still have memorized. Um, but uh, it also helps when you're working on really good songs. And all of, I've been very fortunate to work on shows that all have really good songs. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, after enough listens, visuals slowly but surely start coming um usually I'll I'll start getting ideas in my head and the second that I feel like oh you know I I get this visual idea or I get this idea 
um, that is usually when I will get to my tablet um, or my sketchbook and start thumbing things out. And that leads me to my favorite part, which is brainstorming. Um, this is this is just a silly little term I like to call it, but I like to call it the jello puzzle piece stage. Um, because the way that I like to look at brainstorming and thumbnailing is that you are making jello puzzle pieces. They might not always come out perfectly. They might look a little gross and janky and weird. Um, maybe some of them completely fall out of the mold the second that you try and pop them out. But you might, in like that big glob of jello, you might find pieces that you can kind of push together and you can kind of see working. And that sort of helps you lay out like a very loose, very fluid groundwork for um, the sequence to come. So I'm not in this stage, I'm not looking to make uh, pretty pictures. I'm not looking to do anything super clean or tidy. I'm kind of content with the idea that a lot of the, the concepts that I might throw out, I might not even use. That's okay. Um, it's all just about just throwing things on a page and seeing what sticks. So this is kind of an example of what that looks like for me. Um, so this was from a song sequence on Trollstopia um, from an episode called The Party Switcheroo. Um, and you can see like it's none of this is very coherent. None of it is pretty. Um, none of it is absolutely none of it is chronological. Um, like this is all you can see like kind of my little arrows from places like, OK, no, this goes here. This goes here. I did this all out of order. Um, but really how I kind of went about doing it is when I was listening to the song, I put down the ideas that first came to me, even if they were in the middle of the song, if they're at the end of the song, even if they were nowhere close to each other. Um, and then I kind of built the puzzle pieces around that and tried to kind of fit them together. Um, because like, I feel like one of the, the ways, at least for myself, that I can just absolutely kill the energy to work on a sequence is if I, or a song sequence, is if I try and just force myself like, okay, first, first panel, what's this one going to look like? Second panel, third panel, blah, 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 blah. Then it immediately, because if I don't have an idea, like instantly for what that first panel is going to be, it just, my creative well just dries up and I feel like, okay, I have to get past this hurdle to get to the rest. And all of a sudden I have a hurdle in front of me. Mm. Um, and I think that's like the, I don't want to create hurdles. I don't want it to feel like work. You know, I want it to be fun. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's just kind of allowing myself, giving myself the freedom to tackle it on in my own pace, like whenever I feel like I get the ideas first, um, can really help. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you're if you ever try and remember your dreams or you try and like want to keep a memory of them, um, like a piece of advice that sometimes people get is uh, to write them down instantly, like stream of consciousness you know, even if it's out of order, even if it doesn't make sense. And I feel like it's kind of a similar thing here, at least for me, for my process. Um, I just have to get it all down, even if it's out of order, even if it makes sense to nobody but me, even if it doesn't make sense to me. Because um, if I have it down, that means that I can start doing something with it to make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, and then this is just kind of, this is an example of kind of what it ended up looking like from the extremely bad, dumb drawing up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then yeah so like these are like this is just example of these are examples of the lyrics to the songs that I kind of wrote next to the different keys or the different thumbs so I kind of knew uh knew where where they were going to be placed so um what I keep in mind while making that jello <laughs> uh so just some like these are just some kind of uh elements that over the years that I've, I found myself kind of returning to when I'm working on a song sequence that um, I try and keep, you know, that I try and make sure I know and that I have a grasp on. Uh, so the first one, the theme, what is the theme of the sequence? Um, is it an I want song, which, you know, uh, kind of a musical term for um, if there's a, if there's a specific, so like a, a moment where the character, the main character is singing about something that they want, like a, um Elphaba the wizard and I from Wicked kind of moment um or is it a villain song is it a training montage um what what is the song what is the purpose of the song in the movie or the show or anything what is it trying to convey um because you know I just kind of gave three examples of 
particular song sequences that all kind of fall under these themes that I think work really, really well. Um, and you're going to board all of these differently. Um, so just a thing that I tr like to try and nail down. Um, reality. This is maybe one of the biggest things for me, um, which is what is the reality of the sequence? And basically, like, if you think about how um, songs, like song numbers work in musicals, um, oftentimes characters will sing things and perform things that like they wouldn't do if it was say a normal movie right like Les Miserables for example if it was a normal movie or depiction of the you know the war then you wouldn't like have characters bursting into song right but because it's a musical because we understand that it's stylized that's just the type of that's just the genre um, the audience is going to buy a lot more um, from a song sequence. You're able to kind of twist reality a little more than you would otherwise. Um, and so because of that, you can get away with a lot in a song sequence that you couldn't in, say, just a normal sequence of a show or a movie. Um, you can have reality be a little warped. You can have, like, you know, uh, character like the colors get weird, the lighting get weird. You can have the... Um, interesting transitions you can have more metaphorical imagery um but maybe not necessarily every song sequence is like that you know um there are some song sequences that you can still have a lot of fun with but that don't really get super outlandish or outside of the reality of the project um like kind of weird example um because the world itself is very fantastical but a song sequence like uh, Jack's Lament from Nightmare Before Christmas never leaves the graveyard. Um, it's always there. Like there's never mm. any like aside or any blip from reality. It's always there. And yet they're still able to do these like really fun visual moments uh, with the sequence. Um, so mm. that's just mm. a thing. And um, everything that happens in that sequence like actually happens in the movie. Does yeah. that make sense? Like it's canon. There's nothing that happens that's, like super fantastical that the characters just ignore. It's all a very grounded sequence, even though it's in these heightened emotions. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Whereas like something like, like the Trolls franchise, um, a lot of those song sequences, both in the shows and the movies, like they'll veer, veer into like the, the animation style will change. You'll have these 2D moments where there are like moments where they're dancing in space or, you know, galaxies or, um, different things that wouldn't be possible in, yeah, exactly, in, like, the canon of the project. Um, so uh, that's just kind of a decision that can be really fun to make with a sequence, um, and that can really influence a lot of the the style and the visual imagery. Visual imagery, that's a little redundant, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, genre tempo. Uh, is it a fast song? A slow song? What's the mood? What's the genre? Um, you are going to board a you know, slow love ballad very differently than you were going to board a uh, fast uh, heavy metal sequence, which if you if you get a sequence like that, rad. Um, but, you know, they're going to be, you're going to approach them differently in terms of cuts, in terms of transitions, in terms of uh, performances. Um, so that's a really important thing to nail down too. Um, and then landing on beats, um, kind of an extension of that. Um, what imagery, movement, act, acting uh, can I ensure hits on certain beats in the song to provide the most interest? So you're doing a song sequence. Uh, you want to take advantage of that song um, and you want to make sure that it feels like, you know, unless you are specifically doing something like, um, like it's just kind of an instrumental in the background and it's otherwise a normal sequence. Um, that's, that's its own thing. But if you're trying to do like a more stylized song sequence, you want to make sure that it fits the song, that they kind of go hand in hand. Um, and then this, this still, it's a little, it's a little weird, but, um, one of my favorite, 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 favorite music videos, um, is to the song Colors by Beck. Um, and it's a, it was a music video that was directed by Edgar Wright. And it stars Beck and Allison Brie. Um, and it is like nothing, there's no real story that happens in it. Uh, there's no like narrative really. It's just kind of Beck and Allison Brie like dancing. 
uh, in the sea of a bunch of body suited people. Um, but the cuts, the like the how the dancing falls on the beats, how the song, like the lyrics fall on the beats. It is so entertaining. It's so well done. Um, so I just I wanted to I feel like if this is a really good example of even though it's not animated, kind of what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. Um, so I just wanted to gush about it for a second. So I just put that there. It's really good. Um, and then moving into transitions. Uh, again, with song sequences, you can get a little more stylized um, than perhaps you could with just a normal a normal sequence. So um, what are interesting ways that you can move from one moment to the next? Um, especially since you have a beat, you have a rhythm you're working off of, you can take advantage of that rhythm and have you know scenes blend into each other. You can have the cuts be a little harder to catch. Um, so you know wipes, match cuts, whip pans, fades, all of that kind of stuff um, is really really fun to think about in a song sequence. Um, I just want to check. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then reference, really really important one. Um, what can you look at to provide inspiration or guidance for the sequence? Um, what other movies, shows, etc. have done similar things? Um, so kind of going back to what we were talking about with the handout, um, a lot of times in a handout, um, I will get references like other music videos, other shows, other movies um, that I can kind of look at and research and study um, in order to get a sense of what, um, what the directors and showrunners had in mind. So uh, the little example I showed here, um, I did a song sequence while I was on uh, Big Nate on uh, Rackliff's Goat, I believe, um, that was called uh, She Sees That I'm Awesome. And the genre of the song was this like very cheesy 80s love ballad. And so one of the biggest notes that I was given was like, go back and look at Meatloaf, go back and look at, you know, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Um, and like it was I mean, it was such a delight to to study those because, you know, those kind of music videos, they're so hammy. They're so silly. Um, there's candles everywhere. There's rim lighting. There's lasers. There's so much stuff going on. Um, and so uh, that really, 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 really helped me with and that particular in that particular song. Nate is floating through s space, <laughs> slowly asphyxiating. <laughs> <laughs> like slowly again we're a weird show is slowly dying and going through like hallucinations as oxygen is leaving his brain and uh i think that fit perfectly with with the imagery that you conjured for it which just made it like super power bell or super super over dramatic super ridiculous that was great thank you thank you yeah i mean it was oh, gosh I, I such a good show such a good show um yeah uh just really getting to play around with how much of it to show as sweet and romantic and sappy and how much of it to show as nate nate dying in space and slowly turning bluer and bluer uh it was fun in a very dark way <laughs> but yeah um so that was that was one where reference really 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 helped um Oh, before I move on, actually, one other thing, and I hope I can, I hope I can explain this in it. I've been, I've been like debating how to explain this in a way that doesn't sound really dumb, hmm. so, but it's just going to sound dumb. So I might just explain it as dumb. Um, one thing that I really like to do uh, to try and make sure that the rhythm of the sequence is moving in my head um, or that is is kind of working well the way I visualize it in my head is I will actually try and like kind of mime it out with my hands, like the movement. Um, hmm. So like, I'm trying to think of what a good example of that would be. Um, I guess uh, like, for example, um, I worked on a, on a sequence for trolls where um, there, there were a lot of quick cuts. Um, it was like a kind of, um, it was fun in the sun. It was a. It was like this uh, kind of campy '80s beach party sort of uh, vibe. And um, when I was trying to figure out those cuts, like I would just kind of like sing the song to myself, and then just go like, because there's this one bit that goes, "It's a good time, good time, good time," um, and I would just kind of like 
think about it in my head and go, and it's a good time, good time, good time. And then I ended up kind of incorporating that hand movement into like whip pans that went past. Um, that's a dumb little thing that just kind of helps me actually like acting out, I guess, the movement of the camera um, and then oh. seeing how it works, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Because it also put, it kind of roots it in a physical space in your brain where you're whipping past things. So you're going, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then this is just a little quick aside um, just to kind of talk about my my file or my preferred file setup um, when, I, when I work on song sequences, but also when I just work on normal sequences as well. Um, and this I cannot take credit for. I learned this again from uh, from your own, from one of my former directors. Um, but when I'm working in Storyboard Pro, um, normally the setup kind of looks like this. Um, and you have like these really, really wide margins. So you have all of this white surrounding your canvas. Um, but you also have something that you can utilize uh, called camera view, um, which you can just kind of look at through windows. Um, and I really like to pull out camera view like as its own separate window and put it next to my canvas um, or my my main kind of file um, so that I can see both how it looks uh, like as I'm working on it but then also how kind of the final thing would work because I notice sometimes at least for me um, if I don't have that camera view up where it just shows the canvas I can tend to work like a little bigger than I should um, and accidentally crop things a little awkwardly um with those like really really thin little canvas lines so yeah just thought i'd i'd uh put that out there um and so yeah so once i've got my once i've kind of gone through all of this once i've made my jello once i've brainstormed um i will go into my roughs the rough pass is kind of i've got my ideas figured out in my thumbs loosely at least i can kind of start blocking those out but i know where i'm going so the rough pass for me is really about editing. Um, so I don't I don't bring the WAV file in um, at all until the rough stage. Like I don't worry about timing anything before that point because mm. that's just a different part of my brain um, that I kind of want to save until farther along. I don't want to have to worry about coming up with the ideas and then editing things together at the same time. Um, but I like to use the rough pass for that because that's just when I'm blocking in um, you know, really, really loose drawings. And then I can kind of think about like, okay, how are they going to, um, how am I going to cut them together? How are they going to fall on the beat? So uh, yeah, so that's like in my file, that's when I bring in the little little wave file down here um, and then kind of splice it together. And if you're not working in Storyboard Pro, um, if you're working in something like Photoshop where you would be uh, probably, I'd imagine bringing your, um, your boards into something like uh, uh, Premiere or another editing software. Um, I would say a good time to do that would be after you do your roughs as well. Um, so kind of get that all figured out in that stage. Um, and then after that comes the rough pitch, the <laughs> scariest part of the process for me, um, where basically for the first time, somebody other than myself is looking at the sequence that I've been putting together. Um, and I'm getting feedback from, and uh, it's very nerve wracking, but it can also be really, really helpful um, because I think for me, at least it's the, I think it's the first time that I really get to have a, have a test audience, I suppose, um, where, you know, if there's a, if there's a gag or a visual, a bit of visual humor that I was hoping would land, um, I can see like, okay, did did these people laugh? Like, did my showrunner and my director and the other board partners, did they all laugh at that? Did they seem to like it? If they did, cool, it's working. If they didn't, okay, we can kind of figure out how to finesse that and make it work a little better in the next phase. Um, or, you know, if there was a dramatic beat, like a really emotional beat that I was hoping would hit, like, could I see, did they seem invested in it? Did they seem entertained? Um, if not, okay, then I can go back and see what works. Um, so yeah, so that's that. That's that part. Um, and if you're just working on a sequence on your own, if you're you know not working on something professionally, um, I feel like rough pass is a really good time to bring in your friends, bring in your mentors, bring in other people um, to get that same kind of, like having that test audience is so, so helpful. And then after that, I get into my cleans. So um, this is all actually from the, uh, the sequence that Jim and I were talking about of um, 
Nate and the 80s power ballad. Um, so uh, this is when the editing and the gags are pretty locked in. So now I'm just kind of addressing notes. I'm clarifying drawings, adding tone if need be. Um, the, pretty much all of the sequence took place in space. So I wanted to have like a darker background. I usually might not add this much tone. Um, and then, yeah, also clarifying camera movement, all that good stuff. Um, so that's kind of when it all, all fits together. Um, and then usually there's another pitch uh, where I can kind of get some final thoughts and then it moves past me onto uh, editorial and to the teams beyond that. Um, and again, if you're working on something for yourself, clean pass is another really good time to bring people in. Always have people looking at your work. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, bada boom, you have a song sequence. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's a little bit of my process. Awesome. Awesome. So I, I've heard, um, I have a couple of just personal questions coming up yeah. too. Um, so when, do you have any, do you have any advice for board artists who uh, may not have had experience with timing their work? For instance, like, you know, who, who are used to, uh, or used to working on a show where you don't have to time your boards and you don't necessarily get to see your stuff in animatic mm -hmm. um, down the line. But this may be the first time that if you're working on a song sequence that you have to time your boards. Um, do you have any uh, any advice for those who, who are just adding the time element to it and um, and aren't quite sure what to do or how long things take? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, that's such a good point because that was definitely my first experience um, professionally, like having to edit my boards was through doing song sequences. Um, and that is a part that you have to figure on the pipe on the pipeline um, on the weeks that you get to work um, on your sequence. So usually, like usually the shows that I work on are from are like 11 to 22 minute episodes um so i'll usually get about um with the other you know keeping in mind that i'm usually also working on a bit of the actual episode not just the song sequence i can usually have about like a week and a half or so that i can dedicate to the song um on itself um which usually runs from like at least in my experience, have run from like 40 seconds to a minute and 30 seconds at the most. Um, so I like to give myself like a solid day just to edit everything together if mm -hmm. I can. I like to set that in the schedule. I like to know it's there so then I can kind of work around it um, because, yeah, that's something that I don't want to rush. I don't want to like because that's a really important part of the of the song sequence is making sure everything falls on the beat is making sure everything works together. Um, so that's, and like, you know, if it takes less than a day sick, but I still gave myself that day. Um, and, and when, it's, what are you actually editing? Are you editing your cleans together or are you editing your roughs together? I'm editing my roughs to start with. Um, I, I, I can, I'm a little looser with them. Um, but I try not to be, I try to have them as close to what I see in my head as possible. Um, just so, you know, when I show it to, uh, my, my director, producer, showrunners, board partners, um, they can see, like, I can communicate best what I saw in my head. Um, and then usually I'll get notes like from, from those people, um, as to like, oh, you could probably tighten up this bit or, you know, maybe cut this bit entirely. And then, oopsie, I have a whole portion of my song that I need to figure out how to rework, um. And then uh, I can go, I can go back in and kind of tighten up those, those edits and cuts. Um, but yeah, I usually gotcha. like to kind of get that figured out in roughs. Have you, have you ever put together your rough boards in time um, and then watched it for the first time and been like, oh God, this does not work. Or this is way too slow than I, how I thought it was going to be, or it's way too fast compared to how I thought it was going to be. Oh my God, a million percent. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like especially um, right at the beginning of the rough stage when I still have like those those jello-y puzzle pieces when I'm just trying to fit them together um, and I'm trying to like put them in roughs and clean them up and clarify them and add them together. There's usually at least always like a first pass where I'm like, this 
this isn't working. Uh, I thought mm. this was going to be longer. I thought this was going to be this. Um, but I think that's that's really, um, for me at least, what I like to focus on of the rough stage is just making, is just shearing all of that down and, you know, keeping my drawing simple enough that I can really have time to focus on um, making sure the timing works and the edits, the like the editing all works. Um, and eventually, like, there's always that period, like the first day where I'm like, this is never going to work. This is going to be terrible. And then it eventually works. Um, it just takes some some toying and fiddling with. Uh, but yeah, 100 percent. There's always that initial panic. Cool. Cool. I, I, <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better, too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done much song sequences. Um, uh, yeah, so if anybody has any other questions, anybody's watching on Twitch or, or in the chat, and throw them out. Please feel free. Um, uh, oh, God, I just had a good one, but I lost it because I had that intro. Um, have you ever, has there ever been a song that you felt like you haven't necessarily connected with the song, but had to find, had to find something to go with or like the tone of something that you weren't quite excited about? Yeah, yeah, yes, totally. And how um, and how did you handle that? I guess was my question. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, absolutely. There is uh, there's a certain song sequence that I can think of where I. It's not that the song was bad. Um, it's not like the. It's not that the the sequence was bad or the script was bad. Um, you just weren't connecting with it. Personally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. It was just it wasn't. I was like trying to give myself that time to really play it over and over again in my head. Um, and I was like coming up with nothing. Um, yeah. and I think for me, the best way that I was able to kind of break out, break out of that was just finding that reference, um, and saying like, and like, if, if I was having a hard time, you know, finding something to get fired up about in the song sequence itself, I could find something that I got fired up about in the reference, Mm. Um, where I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's a really cool way that they they shot this or, oh, I really love the like the style of dancing in this or I really, really like this or this or this. And then I could kind of use those things that I really liked about the reference as an anchor and bring that back to um, the song sequence. And usually if I was able to find things that inspired me in the reference, that allowed me to come up with some fun imagery to kind of get me through that specific song. That's cool. And how, and you talked about um, these jello puzzle pieces um, as like the major visual beats of the song that you mm -hmm. want to hit, whether it's a character exchange or, you know, whether it's a specific imagery. Um, how do you think about putting those pieces together? Is it like, oh, I know I can hook this up with transition or I know I can have this character walk over here and then lead in and reveal that? Or how do you, what kind of strategies do you have for connecting those giant jello pieces? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I can go back for like a little visual aid. Um, yeah, so like to give an example of this sequence um a big part of the sequence was we had two you know two of the characters in the show were at a party together we're at these two separate parties um and they're constantly swapping back and forth from the parties um so that the the other party like didn't think they were gone um and so one thing, one idea that came to me, um, because it was also a really kind of like fast paced song sequence, um, was to use split screens um, because, you know, I wanted to show these two characters swapping back and forth between these two places. So um, like this little moment right here in the middle, um, I had this kind of split screen and each character on one side of the split screen and then them kind of jumping back and forth um, in this one portion of the song. So that was kind of one idea that I had. And then there's another one uh, a little later on when we got into the chorus right after this, um, where I wanted to go into a separate idea, um, but I didn't really like know, you know, at first, like how to go from split screens to this other kind of visual gag. Um, but I was kind of thinking about the episode and thinking about the theme. And there was this one bit that kept coming up in the episode where every time that these two characters would swap, they'd high five each other. As they kind of passed by mm. um and so i thought oh well why don't i kind of um like this little bit at the end here 
um, why don't I use that high five to transition into the next shot? So I have these two hands kind of come out of nowhere, high five, and then cause this little like fireworksy explosion um, that then wipes us into the next thing. So yeah, totally. Like that's totally where, at least for me, like transitions come into play um, mm -hmm. and wipes and thinking again, like how, what is a really fun way to get us into the, this next beat? Mm -hmm. Did it feel when you came up with that little fireworks explosion? Did it feel like a cheat or did it feel like a <laughs> yeah, perfect solve? Awesome. Everything feels like a cheat. I have okay. terrible imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair That's my yeah. secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always cheating. Um, but no, it's like I think it um I feel like having those there is definitely that sort of like, ooh, yeah, that I think that works. Um Mm -hmm. which is exciting and like that's one of the things that i love so much about like putting together song sequences um but yeah embrace cheating exactly <laughs> <laughs> and uh on on twitch uh jack jackie jack uh asked is it have you when you get those jello pieces or those big jello puzzle pieces have you ever found yourself with gaps have you ever found yourself like oh i have this 10 second chunk of a song and i do not have an idea for it how and and if you have how do you how do you come up with something or how do you get around that oh my god a million percent yeah um yeah that happens a lot where i have those ideas and then i'm like how do i bridge this together um and yeah i think like again kind of like thinking about transitions um, if the gap isn't too big, like, are there, is there a fun transition that I could show here? Um, I think also if there's a moment, like if there are lyrics, um, looking back at the lyrics and seeing like, are there any bits of imagery that I can glean from this, if not from like the movement of the song itself? Um, and, uh, or honestly, just like if I have a gap and there's like not one specific thing that's coming to mind, I'll again just start like putting out dumb roughs, like putting out silly roughs of like ideas that might not work, that might mm -hmm. not fit here, that I know like my inner critic wants to say, that's dumb, that's not going to work. But I just put them down and I do a bunch of them. Um, and usually, usually like something from that big bundle of dumb thumbnails ends up working. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just kind of a mix of like powering through it, um, looking at the lyrics like rereading the song if I have like the song the lyric sheet in front of me um looking at reference again um seeing if there's anything I can incorporate in reference um yeah cool and me personally that that happens to me a bunch when it's a section of lyrics that are repeated whether if it's a chorus that's repeated the second time or even the third time mm -hmm. and I'm like oh shit I gotta come up with a new idea for this thing that we've already kind of seen and um if I go back to what the imagery was the first time of that chorus and then just add something new onto it, uh, just a little bit on top of it, whether if it was one character doing it, maybe a second character is coming in or like just escalating the chorus in a very small way that can be entertaining because then it also takes this thing that the audience has seen and heard the chorus in this particular visual and twists it a little bit and which is a little bit of a fun surprise but without having to come up with a whole new idea oh yeah no totally um i totally i've had that happen to me too with um with those repeating choruses where you're like well i i used up my one idea or the the main idea here so how can i kind of build off of that um yeah that happened with me on um again that kind of beach party song sequence from trollstopia where there's this repeating chorus of it's a good time, good time, good time. Um, and I didn't really kind of know what to do with that at first. But when I was looking at some of the reference of these like beach party movies, I think I said they're from the 80s, more like from the 50s. Um, but a lot of there's like a genre of those kind of movies of just people singing and dancing and having fun at, at beaches together. And one thing that they would do a lot was like look into the camera and like sing about <laughs> how much fun they're having. Um, uh, and so mm -hmm. I wanted to incorporate that. I think that might've even been a note from you, Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we worked on that together. Oh yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds um, like a good note. Cool. It was a great note. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but uh, but I remember like, I, I thought that was such a funny idea that I was like, well, maybe with the, it's a good time, good time, good time. 
I could have Poppy, who was singing the song, uh, go around to these different groups of people that were doing like silly beach party gag ideas and like make gags out of them. And then also have Poppy staring directly in the camera as she sang each of those three times. And may then maybe like the last time, the last shot we cut to uh, was her running up to Branch, who was kind of the the pragmatic, uh, you know, logical one of the of the group of the trolls. You say the grumpy one. The grumpy, yeah, the grumpy one. one. The yeah. grumpy one. Yeah. Um, and I, so I was just thinking, like, well, what if you know all the other trolls are just having fun and playing around, but what if he's the only one that like sees her looking at camera and just is like, what are you looking at? And so I thought that could be a fun fun button for like that final little bit of the chorus. Um, so, cool. so yeah, just kind of ideas building off of ideas. Ooh, and if awesome, thank you. And if we have any other last minute questions, please throw them out there. Um, but the big one. Everybody wants to know the nuts and bolts. How long does the song sequence take you? And I know that, that like depends on how long the song is. Let's just assume for a one minute song. Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. Um, so yeah, usually I like to give myself, if I can, um, like a week and a half. Um, so like I will, like I said, I'll give myself like half a day to maybe even a full day if I'm really struggling um to just listen to the song and start getting ideas then I go into my brainstorm um after that I try and devote like a day to that um or like maybe like half a day and then I get into my roughs I try to spend like a couple days two days and a half on those um then you know wait for my for my pitch or um get ideas if it's just something that I'm doing on my own um and then uh i'll start cleaning up from there and then i'll have the rest of the time on cleans but yeah that's usually how much of the time okay. if it's like if it's something that i'm working on personally that's a little longer um i'll give myself a bit more time but for something of that length that's usually how i like to work that feels about right about a, about a week and a half full you said for a full sequence for full, yeah like one minute sequence yeah mm -hmm. cool 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 awesome um well i think that's it for tonight Thanks. Uh, thank you, Ainsley, so much for your time. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this will be uh, up on the SFA YouTube channel. This will be, uh, I guess, archived on the Twitch channel as well. Um, we're going to have a couple more uh, SFA speaker events coming up, including one with uh, Megan Ferguson about how to keep your mental health in crazy, crazy times like this. And also just when working generally. Uh, and how what a little bit about like work life balance and work life separation. And, you know, since we're all artists that are incredibly passionate about our art form, how to uh, stay sane when we're doing something that we love for money and for a career and even just for fun, trying to break in and whatnot. Um, yeah. And we're going to have a couple of more coming up. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Ainsley. Again, thank you so much. Um, this was awesome. Thank you everybody for coming and we'll talk to everybody like in a couple of weeks or so. Look out for the invites coming out for that too. Yeah. Have a great Wednesday night. Thank you, Ainsley. Have a great Bye. night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.